What's up everybody, Rob Ferretti here and I hope you're enjoying Sorted. Now we're going to be launching episodes every Tuesday and Friday, essentially straight through Christmas. Uh, there will be a one week gap between the East Coast Regional and the West Coast Regional and then between the West Coast Regional and the launch of the finale. The finale is being filmed on the 23rd of November. So if this is good because this is super fun to film, I hope it's coming across on camera that it's super fun to film. The two winning cars, East Coast, West Coast, are racing each other, and we're going to bring in some hyper cars to race them against. It's going to be really cool we're working in uh, a deal with, you know, I'll, I'll leave that as a surprise. But here you'll see we've got sorted merch. If you go to sortedornot.com, there is a merch store. There's going to be a link in the description. Uh, Matt, Amelia, Tanner, and I are all going to be promoting the merchandise, and we will all be selecting one person from the merchandise sale and it's going to be random but like everybody will have their own little tracking links if you click through their video my video but i will have all of my audience uh they will have their audiences and we will select one winner each we're going to fly them down to the finale on the 23rd we're going to give you rides around a racetrack in these super fun super fast sorted cars and it's going to be a great experience and you get to come to dinner with us it's just going to be a good time uh all expenses paid we'll cover your flights We'll cover your hotel, we'll cover your meal, and then we'll ship you back with some pretty epic memories. So you buy a shirt, you get an entry. You buy 10 shirts, you get 10 entries. You buy a shirt and a hat, whatever. Entry, 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 entry. Every item you buy, you get an entry. We've got long sleeve, we've got short sleeve, and it's just good stuff. So check it out, link in the description. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about that car right behind me, my Ferrari 488 Spider, which I turned into a rental car ultimately uh, because I had trouble selling it for what I wanted to get out of it, what I needed to get out of it. And there was a guy who crashed it. I don't know if you remember, I made videos about it. The guy crashed it a long time ago and now officially he's suing me for crashing my car, right? It's weird, right? Let's see how this works. So. Effectively, he crashed the car, insurance paid for most of it. They paid for the repair and then some of the loss of use, none of the diminished value. Now, when you have an accident on a car like this, there is diminished value and there's loss of use. Not, not necessarily loss of revenue. We'll get into this whole thing. In a whole video, I could talk about loss of use or loss of revenue and all of that stuff. At nauseum, bore most of you, but now we're going to talk about the shiny red Ferrari and why the guy is suing me. Uh, essentially, it's because we're suing him. And now when you sign a contract, when you enter in an agreement, you're taking responsibility to A, return the car in a substantially similar condition, less uh, normal wear and tear. And then if you damage it, you are then responsible for A, the repair of the car, which generally, if you have insurance and the insurance steps in like they're supposed to, will cover that. And then the loss of use and diminished value, which sometimes they will cover it, sometimes they won't. If they don't, you are then responsible for that tab. It sounds scary, generally not really a big deal because insurance, if they cover the rental car, they always cover loss of use and diminished value. And to the point where it, it's like a wash. So say they say um, the diminishment of value is, we think it's 10%. So just say 30 grand, they think it's 8%, 24 grand. I'm not gonna argue over that. We just take the check and move on. Uh, in this situation, we had to litigate and go after the guy and send demands to both the insurance company and the individual for the, uh, the additional costs, the loss of use diminished value on the vehicle. And he in turn countersued. And that's why I'm getting sued now. And saying that the tires were, the, the main things he's saying are the tires were bald and that uh, he wasn't instructed how to use the car in rain mode. So like we can pull this apart all you want. We have a very, and it was nighttime. So he wasn't able to adequately check the tires again all moot points because guess what? I still got the tires. Check this out. Let's, let's hop off the tripod for a second. I've got my little Ferrari parts graveyard in the back here, or at least the Ferrari tire graveyard. Look at that. It's pretty cool. Canvas. Um, let's see. This is Mrs. Pirelli. This is one. I'm sorry. I had Pirelli's and Michelin's. The first accident was on Pirelli's. The second accident was on Michelin's. And you'll remember 
I made a video about it as it was crashed on the lift with the thing. And there's like, the guy said the tires were bald or the tow truck driver, whoever it was, like, oh, the tires are bald. They're idiots. It's, you can say whatever you want, but there's quantitative stuff. And the fact that I've got the tires and you can see these are called wear bars, right? That's a wear bar. Let me show you, cause I have a tape measure over here. And I've actually preset this up because I didn't have a tire depth monitor handy, but all right. The, if you check tirerack.com for the Pirellis, which are over here, and that's what was on the car at the time, the maximum depth on a brand new tire is 930 seconds, which is one quarter of an inch, which when you look at this, is one quarter of an inch right there. So that is maximum tire depth on these cars. And now the wear bars are set at what they consider to be the uh, minimum level that, that these are the wear bars. That's at 230 seconds. And 230 seconds is like, all right, it's time to change your tires. If, to illustrate that, I've got the idiot who did the burnouts in my car. And you can see very clearly the tires are now at the wear bars. Time to replace these tires. You can see why this would be unsafe. There's no channeling for water, unsafe. That's why you replace the tires. However, these tires are nowhere near that. So, and then uh, that's one I dug under the stack of wheels here. This is the other one, this is a Pirelli. And this is brand new. And if you see all the way at the bottom there, the wear bar at the 930, at the 230 seconds, that's how much life is left on the tire. So you got to say like, let's see, I want to make sure that's as flush down as we can get. You got to say that these have maybe 30% wear. Remember, the guy crashed the car at 4,700 miles. So these tires are virtually new. And the thing is, you can make whatever accusations you want. You can't argue with that. That's the tire. It's still on the rim from when he crashed it. It's the tire that was on the car. And it's nowhere near bad. So your claim is, or the claim, is astonishing. And then on top of that, to be like, well, you didn't show me how to use it, blah, 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 blah. We, we do on every rental, and that's why I'm pretty happy about this, because fighting lawsuits is just something we do. But this guy ultimately is going to have to pay up, and that's why he's putting up any fight. He's trying to say that I crashed your car, and it's your fault. Come on. Now, like, if this guy was so worried, I, then, I still have my GPS records. You look at the GPS records. This guy's, if he's so concerned about the, the performance mode that the car was in or having it in rain mode, you know what mode he had it in? Traction control off. And we always tell people, well, here are the different modes, here's when you use them, and this is what not to do. Never turn traction control off. Because that's the only time one of these cars crashes, when some guy thinks, he's like, I got this. And what type of guy is that? Well, it's the type of guy that's doing 96 miles an hour on my GPS shortly before crashing the car. Now, that means if the GPS pings every minute, so you can sort of paint a picture of how somebody is driving, based on the speed pings. And it was like 86, 96. That means this guy was probably upwards of 100. It's not taking maximum speed readings. It's taking a, a snapshot every minute. So if I see like speed alert, speed alert, speed alert, speed alert, I can tell somebody's hauling butt. And now this guy's hauling butt in the rain and then comes out of a tall plaza and then a little ways up the road, loses control. Probably in second gear when boost kicks in, got sideways, and he had traction control off because that's what people who are better drivers than the Ferrari engineers think they are do. And this guy ate it right into the center divider. So now I have to go after him and, and try to make it. This is all like just making the company whole, right? When, when somebody crashes a car, and I just had this conversation about some, some other car with a different customer. When you crash my car, just paying me for the damage doesn't do it. It doesn't make me happy, right? Like, A, I don't want you to crash the car. It's not our business. But B, if you crash the car, cause $50,000 worth of damage, and give me $50,000, I'll, 
I still was unable to rent that car. I'm still making payments on that car. I'm still paying insurance on that car. So I'm out the revenue. I've still got all my overhead. The warehouse is still here. The staffing costs are still here. I'm not making a dollar in revenue. I'm losing value on the diminishment of value on the car. There's so many costs that just paying me, oh, sorry for the 50 grand in damage, here's 50 grand, that doesn't get me anywhere because now I haven't been able to rent the car. And this guy crashed it in like, uh, I think it was April. So right going into my peak season, I lose two or three months on that car. That's not good news. And, and that sucks to, to try to say like, oh, well, you're not out anything. Even giving me the money for the repair, I'm still out a significant portion of money. I'm still out all the revenue loss. I rather you didn't crash the car. And, and now I can go make my revenue on the car. I can go, uh, I mean, I have additional expenses. I have fuel toll expenses when you do rent the car. But at least I'm generating revenue. That, that revenue, every rental, if it goes out for $2,000 a day, some of that goes to my salary. Some of that goes to this guy's salary. Some of that goes to that girl's salary. Some of that guy. So like some of that turns the lights on. Some of that pays for the warehousing. Some of that pays for the payments on the truck. Some of that pays for all of the wear and tear on the cars, the tires, the brakes, everything that goes into running a business, which you have to understand is fairly costly. So the claim that this guy with his speeding and, and everything else just prior to this in the rain is somehow not at fault for crashing my car is mind boggling. That's why when I first heard it, I was like, ah, whatever, the car's got 5,000 miles on it. And of the uh, 4,900, 4,700 miles on it would crash, I put 1,500 miles on it and I didn't do any donuts, I didn't do any burnouts. So you're talking about like 3,000 miles of use on this tire because like when I'm driving it, it's getting traction, goes. A set of tires when I drive will go about 20,000, maybe 25,000 miles unless it's on my Corvette when it's old enough, I just roast them up. But uh, other than that, like if I, on my Ferraris, I'll get 20,000 miles on a set of tires easy. And that's just my clutches. Like I, I've had on my 360s, when we rented them out, we'd get about 15,000 miles per clutch. Me, my car's at 23,000 miles, factory clutch. When's it gonna fail? Who knows? But it doesn't feel like it's very close and I'm excited to see how far I can push it. It's like a little game. But there you go, Rob Ferretti, thanks for watching. Uh, Tuesdays and Fridays for Sorted if you want to check it out, and I will keep you in the loop as to how this wraps up. Rob Freddy, enjoy Sorted, uh, coming up again tomorrow, and I will see you then. And uh, also, I will be joining you guys, whoever wants to join, for my live stream Friday night. We can talk Sorted all we want, and I'm going to have a couple of drinks with you guys, courtesy of Whistlepig. So you guys are familiar with my other company, Adventure Drives, right? Well, we're going to be going to Scotland in October. We're going to be doing Scotch distilleries, playing golf at St. Andrews if you want to do that, walking around, seeing lakes, waterfalls, driving the North Coast. It's going to be an amazing trip. Prices start as low as $2,500 per person for the shorter trip in Scotland. If you're interested in going, check out the link in the description.